of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you into the inner sanctum once again. Come in. Our little place may not be a mansion, but it has its advantages. For one thing, it's thoroughly scare condition. The scream pipes are always in good working order. And the rent's quite reasonable. We get a cut rate. <laughs> Had your warning. Whatever happens from now on, you asked for. Just be sure the family is provided for. Mm. And now to our happy little anecdote for tonight. Bird song for a murderer. My name is Carl Warner. I'm not a young man any longer, but I don't mind that. I wasn't very happy when I was young. Now, well, at least I'm not unhappy. And late at night, after Elaine has gone upstairs to bed, uh, she's my wife, and she's very pretty and younger than I am, and perhaps I made a mistake in marrying her, but, well, anyway, late at night, I go into the room where I keep the birds, and then... Listening to them sing, I get as close to happiness as I can expect. I stay an hour, and then I cover their cages. And then they know it's time to sleep, and they sleep. Even on the stormiest of nights, and this was a stormy night. Someone knocked at the front door. It was late. We know very few people. We kept to ourselves, mostly Elaine and I, so... I was worried a little when I opened the door. Yes? You mind if I come in, Mr. Warner? It's kind of damp out. No, of course not. You... You seem to know me. I do, don't I? But I don't know you. My name is Brule. Chester Brule. Oh, uh, Chester Brule. I, I still don't know. Remember? Eh, it doesn't matter. What? What did you want? Nice place you got here. Much nicer than Cragmount. Cragmount? Cragmount Asylum for the Insane. You... You work there? I used to work there. Oh. This is all very interesting. Funny but... thing happened just before I left. One of the inmates escaped. This baby was a homicidal maniac. Homicidal? Yeah, that's right. I, I don't see what all this has to do with me. I didn't say it had. There was one funny thing about this inmate. What's that? Loved canaries. Loved to listen to them sing. Psychiatrists at Cragmount found it very interesting. Birdsong was the only thing that kept the murderer's impulses down. I, I... Uh, uh, Mr. Warner, I'm out of work. That's, that's too bad. You're not doing badly. Nice house, furnishings. Didn't I hear canaries singing before I come into the house? Maybe, maybe you did. So, uh, 5,000? In the morning? No. I think yes. Otherwise, Cragmount will be happy to hear from me. Eleven Crescent Place. Room 2B. In the morning. You can show me to the door now. Of course. Good night, Mr. Warner. Till we meet again. I watched him go out into the blackness, and the blackness swallow him. The birds were quiet. I thought for a moment of taking the covers off the cages and letting the birds sing, and then... Then I thought that tonight it might be better if I didn't let the birds sing. <laughs> Couldn't wait 
till morning, huh? I didn't expect it. Wait. Wait, that knife. No. No. Ah. Oh. I shouldn't have let you. Surprise. Surprise. I... I couldn't have slept more than two or three hours. Fortunately, Elaine and I had separate rooms. And at breakfast the next morning, she was fresh and young and beautiful. Carl? Huh? Why are you staring at me in that funny way? Oh, nothing. You, you really shouldn't read at meals. Oh, it's only the paper. So many exciting things happen, I can't wait till I get to them. Still... Oh, isn't that terrible? What is? A man was murdered last night. Not very far from here, Crescent Place. Crescent Place? Such an odd name. Chester Brule. Oh. God, your coffee cup. Sorry, I... I wish you wouldn't read the paper. It says that his canary... He had a canary car. Was singing when the landlady found the body. Oh, that's pathetic. Elaine, I told you not to read that paper. The Give it to me. Carl, you're tearing the paper up. What's the matter? I, I, I'm nervous this morning. Don't remember you ever having been like this before. I told you I was nervous. Now look, darling. Why don't you go into the aviary? Listen to the birds for a while. You love them so, and they have such a nice effect on you. I went into the aviary, as she suggested, and I listened to the birds. Quite a little while before I stopped trembling. Carl? Yes, dear? Come into the kitchen. All right. I've been washing the breakfast dishes, darling, and found this among them. Carving knife. This isn't that funny. Besides, look at it. The blade's all covered with brown stain. I, I see. Sure, I washed it after dinner last night. Did you use it for anything? No, darling. Now give it to me and I'll wash it now. Oh, I can do it. I just wonder. But... Oh, the door. Will no, you... No, you give me the knife. And you answer the door. Uh, I said you answer the door. All right. There's nothing to shout about. I don't know what's the matter with you this morning. I wash the knife. Quickly, but carefully. Very quickly, but very carefully. It didn't take long. The... The stains hadn't hardened much, the... the brown stains. Carl? Yes? Someone to see you. A man. What does he want? He didn't say, except that it was important. I'll go see him. But he said he's a lieutenant. A lieutenant Greg, from the police. There are 17 steps between the kitchen and our living room. I know, because I counted them while I was walking to see Lieutenant Gregg of the police. Seventeen steps to make my face polite, relaxed, smiling. But would I be able to hide the trembling of my hands? You're Lieutenant Gregg. My wife said you wanted to see me. Yes, that's right. Mr. Warner, did you know a man named Chester Brule... Chester Brule, why, I, I can't say offhand. I've got such a bad memory for names. I may or I may not. Why? He's murdered last night. You see, we found your name and address in Brule's address book. I see. We thought you might be able to help us. Well, the fact that my name is in his address book doesn't mean Prove that... anything? Well, of course not. Uh, would the fact that Brule used to be an attendant in an insane asylum mean anything to you? Why should it mean anything to me? Well, I didn't say it should, Mr. Warner. I just thought... Well, it doesn't. Well, I guess that's that. You know, funny thing. There was a birdcage in Brule's room with a canary in it, singing its head off. Huh? Well, lots of people are fond of canaries. Sure, sure. What was funny about it is that Brule's landlady swears Brule never had a bird. That, that is funny. The way it looks, the killer knifed Brule and then left the cage and the bird in it behind him. Doesn't make any sense. Unless you figure that the guy who killed Brule was insane. The 
birds have been quiet, but the slam of the door may be started them off. And I knew that somehow I would have to get the cage and the bird in it out of Brule's room. I didn't know how I'd do it, but I'd do it no matter how insane it was. <laughs> Dark when I got to Crescent Place. Dark on a lonely street. There was no one in front of the house. Nothing to show that a man had died inside the night before with a knife in his throat. The door was open. There was a dim light in the vestibule, leaving the stairs beyond in, in darkness. I went up them to the second floor. There was no one in the corridor. The door of 2B opened and I went in. There was no light. The moon cast a pale glimmer over the room and someone in a chair near the window. For a moment I thought it was Brule, but... but there was no blood. And then I realized it was a policeman in uniform, asleep. The cage was near the sleeping man. Would his sleep be sound enough? I reached out lifted the cage, reached the door, and closed it. I... I was safe. Hello? Yes? Oh, I'm so glad you're home. That Lieutenant Gregg is here again. Gregg? Where? In the bird room. Why did you take him to the bird room? He asked me to. All right. Oh, Lieutenant Gregg. Oh, hello, Mr. Warner. Quite a collection of canaries you've got here. Yes, I have. Uh, were you home all last night? Of course. This is still about Chester Bull's murder? Mm-hmm. Say, uh, remember my mentioning I thought that the man who'd killed Brule and left the birdcage behind him must be insane? Well, you, you did say something of the sort. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the fact that Brule used to work with insane people... Begins to mesh, huh? Oh, I know very little about police work. I hope I'm not boring you. Anyway, it occurs to me, maybe I'd better take a trip up to Cragmount. I suppose going to asylums or any place else is just part of your job. Oh, sure. Uh, <clears throat> did uh, I mention Cragmount was an asylum? Well, uh, you, uh, well, you must have. I mean, yeah, I did... yeah. Well, I'll run up there and I wouldn't be surprised if I get all the answers. What do you think? I think I'm going to. Oh, uh, what is it, Elaine? Well, it's so late, I thought... Oh, I can take a hint, Mrs. Warner. Don't bother showing me to the door. He seems like a very nice man. He... Carl, stop it. What? That stare. <laughs> if I didn't know you so well, I'd, I'd say you were going mad. <laughs> to bed, Elaine. All right, darling. Oh, Carl, look. Look at what? Through the window, the garden. Lieutenant Gregg didn't go away. He's down there. Get away from that window. Go to bed. I'm going. But he looks as if he's waiting down there for something. For what, Carl? I knew what he was waiting for. I knew I mustn't go to sleep. Things happen when you sleep. Terrible things. But I hadn't slept well the night before. Not well at all. And there'd been the strain of the day. And it was night now. And 
Ah, still. as soon as I got up. He wasn't in the garden anymore. He must have got tired, gone home, or back to headquarters, wherever policemen go. Oh, dear. That's the Swenson's dog. He's got into our garden again. I'll have to get him out. Elaine, don't. The darling, you dig up all the flowers looking for bones. Okay. Elaine. Maybe, maybe he won't be there. And I'll be Elaine. Where are you? Oh, under the tree. What? Here. What? Look, Lieutenant Greg. <laughs> His throat. <laughs> Come inside. Oh, all right. The kitchen. Tower, where are you going? The kitchen. What are you doing? The drawer. Silverware. Yes. It's here. The, the carving knife. That's right. Carl, I thought you washed it last night. I guess you didn't. You'd be wrong. I did wash it last night. But the stains are still there. The brown stains. These are fresh ones, Elaine. Get out of my way. But... I've got to go to the bird room. Carl, please don't go away from me. Carl! I was holding the carving knife in my hand. Started to put it down, and then I, I held on to it anyway. It would take taking the covers off the cages awkward, but uh, I held on to it anyway. And the birds were still. They remained still, unless I took the covers off. Elaine. Carl, you must tell me what's wrong. Don't, don't come any closer. But... Elaine, please, not any closer. You, you've got that knife in your hand. Yes. The one with the brown stains. Oh, Carl. Shh, don't say anything. Carl, the night before last. Elaine, don't ask questions. That's dangerous. You were out of the no. house last night when Lieutenant Gregg was I was killed. asleep. You have the knife, Carl. Yes. Give it to me. No. Please, Carl. No, stay where you are. All right. You may keep the knife. Because... Look, Carl. A revolver? Yes. Lieutenant Gregg's revolver. Elaine, give that to me. Oh, no. I took it from Lieutenant Gregg last night. After he stopped crying. They always cry when you... Elaine. Didn't like it the way you've been looking at me, Carl. You were thinking that maybe you'd have to send me back to Craigmont. I wasn't. You were, Carl. I know you were. After Chester Brew died. Elaine. Stop where you are. All right, but... Keep your hands away from the birdcage. Don't pull off the cover. <laughs> oh. oh, Carl, I've hurt you. Uh, uh, never mind. But I didn't want to. Are you going to cry like the others? It was my fault. I loved you too well. I, I really killed those others. Not you, my darling. That's a very silly thing to say. And I'll become quite angry. I, I am quite angry. <laughs> Carl, you silly. You pulled the covers off the cage. Carl? Carl, I'm speaking to you. Those birds, I don't like them. Carl? Oh, poor Carl. He's 
dead. I loved him, and now he's dead. But anyway, he didn't cry. He didn't cry. Well, there it is. And so sweet. The story of a couple of lovebirds who, instead of billing and cooing, went in for killing and shooting. (laughs) Of course, it was all little Elaine's idea. All Carl did was cover up. Well, friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time, when we'll be back with a little hunk of horror. (laughs) You'll be sure to listen, won't you? Until next week, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams.